Hello and welcome back to Conelander's Dirt Rally League. Uh, what a wonderful thing we have in front of us. As you can see, it is our one and only choice is the Renault Alpine A110, otherwise known as the Willys Interlagos, to mentally insane people like me. <laughs> Uh, this is a fantastic change of pace. Uh, last last uh, rally we had together, we had serious talk. Uh, this time we're gonna have fun. We're gonna just enjoy and bask in the glory that is this car and how fantastic it is. Uh, I will say in Finland it shows a little weakness like most cars do uh, here of it's bumpy and you need to be able to control your speed rather well so you don't bounce around too much and I don't do that I think about doing it but I don't do it all right I'm gonna go to set up my vehicle my typical brake bias and make it a little uh, softer. And that seemed to help, possibly? I don't really know. All right. No, I don't want to go into further detail because uh, I can't be bothered to set up anything into that detail. That's too much work. All right, I did do some practice for once, too. And that means that I should just completely skip the shakedown because me can't. What could possibly go wrong by do skipping the shakedown? Uh, but I did do practice for once, mostly because I love this car and more time driving it is better. But uh, I wanted to stop practicing so I didn't get too uh, ADD and not pay attention during the uh, league. So. Without further ado, let's get this Five, show on the road. Four, three, two, one, go. Right six over crest. So, let's Left start 40, off. 40. Uh, those of you who right have not seen the last time we did these cars, or we had the choice, and 40. I picked this car. Crest. I mentioned, as I did in the intro of this video, that while it is a Renault Alpine, it is also known as the Willys Interlagos, which uh, came about because of a deal with Willys Overland. Uh, at the time, it wasn't just Willys anymore, it was Willys Overland. Because uh, they partnered with Press Overland, jump, and, and jump. Into right they, uh, Press as a combined company, made a partnership and with right Renault uh, jump, to baby. start and off, um, based on what I've and read, right. what little <laughs> research I've done and into it, uh, they did it to right what it seems like to get their foot, uh, or to get like a market in Brazil. Which is where the Willys Interlargos was made and sold. Uh, it was made and sold exclusively in Brazil. And it was not uh, what you would say is a successful car. Uh, and that wasn't completely to do with the Willys name being new in Brazil. Uh, part of that was the base car that it was on, the Alpine 110, wasn't much of a seller itself. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that is. Uh, what? I'm not sure what the competition there was uh, in other markets, other brands at the time, especially in Brazil. I, my concept of the Brazilian market at, in the 19, uh, early 1960s to mid-1960s is zero. <laughs> um, but it wasn't ever really a uh, high-selling car. 
uh, I believe from best maybe. recollection, there's only 800 and something uh, examples of the Willys Interlagos uh, ever made, and who knows how many of those actually survived uh, over the years. And the rarity factor of these vehicles goes up even more because it wasn't a single version of this car. There was uh, three different versions. There was a this kind of coupe style. There was a convertible or cabriolet, however you want to call it. And I forget what the third one was. But there's three different types, or three different ones. So of those 880, only so many of each of those types were made, and I don't even think anyone knows the real numbers of uh, how many of each are even made, because it's such a, a rare car that the uh, information about it is uh, limited and not very uh, well known, as in like, uh, there's not a lot of people trying to figure it out. It's not like uh, how many uh, Z28 Camaros or stuff like that where uh, the big issue with people cloning them and uh, trying to rebrand them as a Z28. It's, it didn't have any of that, so there's not as much of a reason to try to identify each version that was sold and how many of exact ones were sold because it's just such a rare and quirky car that there's no real uh, drive. A lot of people uh, don't know it exists and it makes it kind of as kind of part of the appeal to me uh, of it to me is that just the sheer craziness of what it is um, that a company such as Willie's Overland who at the time was doing sales in mostly utility vehicles your uh, 60s you're talking uh, that would be the uh, CJ6 era, I believe, CJ5, CJ6, CJ7 era, um, and the uh, various wagons, they had different trim levels, it was all very utilitarian vehicles, and uh, in the 50s around that, like I think uh, somewhere in the 50s, they tried to uh, they had their economy cars, and actually if you go even back in the 40s, uh, they had their economy cars, but they never were, uh, they never really took off like their utilitarian vehicles did. Oh, patrol turn. Survived it. Don't kill the people. Oh, survived it. Whew. Forgot about it. Um, but... Uh, their cars just never did very well. Uh, the best their the best car did was the early 40s. Uh, with the oh man, what's, Americar, the Willys Americar, and that is the Willys that uh, are which I should have been misspeaking all this time. Uh, technically it's pronounced Willis, but I, just one of those things that gets ingrained in your memory that you say Willys, but um, the, America, the Americar is uh, one of the most recognized Willys around, especially in the uh, hot rod scene, because it's that classic uh, American gasser that you like it's the iconic American gasser, the most sought after. They're nuts in value, uh, especially when you like fiberglass replicas sell for like 40 grand. <laughs> it's insane, and that's like not even done up. And the steel bodies is just astronomical. The price they go for, but uh, 
they were always popular in the hot rodding scene, but uh, not a really popular vehicle, not a mass produced vehicle. And just the whole rebranding of this in Brazil seemed odd to me. And I also like to point out that was a hell of a divergence I went on there. A minute and one second. Uh, that's pretty slow, but I can live with it. And the crazy people up top. Uh, let's see how we did compared to those crazies. All right. We were. Ooh. Makes me feel terrible about myself. Alex and Essie did better than me. Um, got Cone, the Mates, Stapley, I just killed the cow. And Maestro, of course, up in first. Who we got below us? We got G-Man, Magnet OS, Yames, uh, Xavier Penguin, NCW. NCWG, I should say. Um, so, let's move on. But yeah, the just in general, the regular cars, sedans that uh, Willie's Overland or uh, Willie's that uh, when they made them never really sold that well, never did that well, and that eventually led to them pretty much dropping them all together and I think that also had a lot to do with uh, all the uh, exchanges and hands that Willie's and eventually Jeep uh, went through uh, after a while when they were uh, being sold the companies they were being sold to only ever saw value in the utility vehicles they never saw any value in their cars so, after they had exchanged hands a few times, the uh, just regular car aspect of it uh, just completely disappeared because the companies that were buying them had no interest in it because they never really did well. And so, I would have to do some more research about exact dates and everything. But I wonder if this would actually be, quote unquote, the last uh, Willie's car made. Granted, Willie's didn't have much to do with it other than name, and uh, they had some slightly different panels if I could find the gear. <laughs> I don't want to shift because I know I'm going to need to downshift for here. But, uh. Oopsies. But uh, I'm curious. I'll have to look that up after this. Uh, I do this. It'll be interesting to find that out. Um, and the other great thing I like about this car is that it uh, started that kind of uh, biz or. Uh, Presence of Willie's in in uh, Brazil and from recent uh, just learning about expanding my knowledge of Jeep and Willie's, uh, I discovered there's like all the versions uh, of these uh, Willie's Jeeps and Will. Er, yeah, Willie's Jeeps and everything in Brazil, and whenever they went to the Brazilian market, for the most part, they got a uh, bit of a facelift, uh, usually, usually a different front face, uh, some different body styling, and a lot of them looked really good. Uh, I, of course, like the original Willie's uh, designs and everything. I love the Willie's wagon. It's the Willys truck, they're beautiful vehicles in my eyes, uh, and what they are for utility vehicles, and even just as vehicles in general, they're, in my opinion, very pretty. Um, 
but the Brazilian versions have their own kind of flair to them that I really like. They uh, almost uh, go back in time from when they were actually made to bigger presence cars that have uh, the very wide uh, wide presence, bulky presence uh, of an SUV or truck, kind of like your uh, 40s trucks, and your 30s and 40s trucks, has that kind of uh, appearance to it, which I really, I really like. But uh, I think that's another reason I uh, am quite fond of this Willie's Interlar Interlargos. Or Interlagos, sorry. I have trouble with the English language, language as is, <laughs> but when I'm trying not to die, it gets accentuated. Sorry. <laughs> uh, topic stuff is gonna be hard here. Um, and also. I don't know uh, where to go from here because I think I got in those two first the first two stages I got through a lot of uh, uh, more Willie's slash Jeep information than the average person can handle for a week in those two stages. Um, I am a fountain of knowledge when it comes to that. But, uh, I will admit, there is a lot that I don't know, as you would expect with, I'm only 24 years old, so I haven't been around that long, and I definitely haven't been around when a lot of this, uh, a lot of this stuff was currently going on. I have no first-hand experience of, uh, anything to do with willies and anything to do with jeep. Uh, like early Jeep, uh, I didn't really get involved with Jeeps until, oh boy, uh, really, uh, when I first started, went to learn to drive, uh, a few years before I started driving, uh, one of the guys my dad works with, uh, decided to sell his, uh, 95 Wrangler, and my dad bought it, and because prior to uh, that, my dad had owned a Blazer that he had lifted, and it was uh, on 35-inch tires lifted. It was it was a nice truck, it had a 350 uh, in it. It would occasionally drop drive shafts and blow up axles because it was a little bit too powerful for what it had uh, drivetrain wise and uh, he had gotten rid of it uh, probably mostly because of me and my brothers <laughs> but uh, and he had actually owned a, a Jeep prior to that now that I think about it before I was even born he had owned a, uh, a CJ5 with a uh, fiberglass body and uh, had, I forget what motor in it, it was a 400 and something cubic inch motor in it and it was enough to spin all four tires and smoke them and it was also capable of turning a drive shaft into a uh, flying sharp projectile which made that promptly go away because my brothers, my two brothers were uh, young at the time and my mom was not too happy about that so that was actually his first Jeep and then he ended up getting the second one when I was in had to be when I was in uh, either middle school or high school early high school and we started going uh, rock crawling with it and that got me into Jeeps uh, prior to that I never even 
considered Jeeps. I never really looked at them. I always had a fascination with cars, uh, but Jeeps in general didn't start until after my dad got that one and we went rock crawling. I fell in love with rock crawling. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. We had a couple moments there, but other than that, it wasn't that bad. Because uh, I know Cone, when he did his run, because I watched it live, uh, he was like, oh, the rain's not that bad. It's uh, barely any difference in this car. <laughs> not for me, Cone. Not for me. All right, so let's get this show on the road. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Right, four over and so, uh, I think I have, uh, completely exhausted what I was going to talk about now. Uh, even the extra stuff, uh, about how I got into Jeep Slate. Uh, I could go on further about my experience getting into Jeep and Jeeps and how I bought mine. And, uh, I could talk for days about... Uh, the Cherokee I ended up getting and all the things I've been through with that but uh, I'll save that for another day and uh, let's just focus on talking about what we're doing here and enjoying the last glorious glorious bit we have with this car and I guess I should point out <laughs> because I've been talking about the history and all these other things. I haven't really talked about driving it in this game, and as you might yeah, be able to hazard a guess because of how I keep talking about how much I love it, it drives fantastically. It's, it's very forgiving, especially for a terrible driver like me. It's, it's smooth, it... It's very predictable, despite me spinning out there. Uh, the car, the way the car that handles is very predictable. The lack of control when your wheels aren't on the ground is not the car's fault. <laughs> That's my own fault for not preparing for the bumps properly and getting out of control prior to the jump. So, uh, yeah, that was just me uh, not pre-braking like there, mostly because I'm talking about it and not focusing on what I'm doing. And uh, I might lose a couple positions due to that spin because... Uh, Spins in these cars are very detrimental to your time because of just how momentum-based they are. You you uh, lose so much momentum by spinning, even if you don't get a penalty. Like normally in the fast cars, a penalty is a death sentence. In these cars, a spin is pretty much a death sentence just because of the momentum you lose. You don't lose a whole lot of time in the spin itself, but you lose time in the time it takes you to get back uh, your momentum and your flow as I have right now everything is flowing together very smoothly and nicely uh, so you lose that and it takes quite a bit of time to get it back come on come on come on come on come on come on, come on. nope that kicked back more than I expected Ooh. alright gets the heart racing a bit there this this game is so fantastic at just a sense of speed and fear for your life. Uh, most games, Assetto Corsa even, like Assetto Corsa is a great sim, but you sometimes lose your fear for your own well-being just because you don't, I don't know what it is, but you don't get that panic factor you get here. Uh, Maybe it's just because of the uh, control being lost in an instant. Uh, but it. This, this game has that so well. Alright. Nope, not, not what I wanted. I wanted to upshift. 
I was expecting it to turn down again. 411. Whew. Oh man, I'm sad it's over. 34 seconds. Pretty consistent. Uh, that could have went a lot better if we didn't have those two. I think we had three major slip ups there. Uh, I mean, uh, I just want to get a little bit of replay I can use for a screenshot and I can do a little bit of a cooldown talk. But yeah, this. This is a fantastic thing to uh, be able to do and experience after uh, the seriousness of the last right time. Uh, God, I love this car. Uh, thank Cone for picking this so much. Uh, especially since uh, he must have constantly consciously thought about the fact that he's going to have to deal with me constantly calling it a Willy's Interlagos because <laughs> I always say it, I always bring it up whenever they talk about this car and even when they don't talk about this car I bring it up <laughs> just because I love it and uh, it's just a fun thing and uh, I'm happy that he actually picked it because uh, <laughs> He 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 uh he probably hesitated for a good second because he's like ah powers is gonna constantly be talking about it if I pick it <laughs> so thanks for putting up with me cone uh anyway I think that's good enough for uh what I want to do here's uh that spin yeah we lost a good uh, I would say a good five seconds there maybe more and that would have uh, we probably would our best stage if it wasn't for uh, that. So let's continue. I'm gonna say we dropped a position or two there. So we're maybe in seventh. Eighth. That was pretty close. Right behind Stapley, who uh, does pretty good. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, ended up just above G-Man, and thankfully way above or. Er, substantially enough above Mr. Alex Nessie and I would have never lived that down if he beat me so uh, thank God for that <laughs> anyway I'd like to thank you for watching this and uh, I hope you learned some things and enjoyed my history and if anyone is more knowing about the subject and knows anything I might have screwed up uh, about in my rambles please correct me because I love learning about these things and one thing I don't mind being is wrong because that's one thing I've learned uh, in the last couple years of my life is that being wrong is actually a really good thing because if you go into something without knowing it if you just if you don't have an opinion you're afraid to commit to an answer uh, you get into trouble that way and it's alright to go with something and l have someone correct you and just accept you're wrong because you can learn from it and better yourself from it and you don't get that opportunity if you don't commit and uh, accept what, that you can be wrong uh, anyway rambling again thank you for watching